In the name of God, I'm Muhammad, and today, for the first time ever, I'm gonna show you how I usually prepare my traditional Persian ink for calligraphy. In Iran, however, there are two kinds of inks, I mean liquid and solid inks. It differs from calligrapher to calligrapher what kind of ink they prefer to choose. But as far as I know, most of them prefer to use the latter in terms of quality, including me. You know all Iranian calligraphers and ink makers, those who lived in the last centuries, were so sophisticated. They skillfully found out what materials and how much should be basically mixed with soot, alum, oak apple, and also gum arabic, which are the four main ingredients for making black ink, so that after a long and very difficult process, they could ultimately make the ink with a top quality. Whereas nowadays the extra materials are usually added to the ink, which has been already made. On top of that, although there are a lot of different recipes of making ink, it is believed that none of them is complete. Since most recipes were usually written as poetry, some parts of them might have been omitted due to the poem's rhyme or even those calligraphers and ink makers probably wanted to keep them as a secret. That's why the quality of the inks that are abundantly available nowadays in every art store is not nearly as good as those which were made in the past, I can say. Here are some ingredients, which most of them are vegetables, like henna, indigo, myrtle, mullen or shepherd's claw, saffron, which is considered as one of the main souvenir in Iran, daughter, aloe, walnut shells, kalbun, candy or rock candy, that is a traditional sweet and very popular for many in our country, camphor, vinegar, honey, but it would be better if it is 100% natural. Some piece of metals like copper, brass, silver and steel which are available in abundance. We need also either some water or rose water. Each of these ingredients plays a prominent role in giving the ink a very good quality. For example, henna, indigo, mullein, walnut shells and saffron are all color fixers and also henna is an anti mold I can say the greenish color is what you'll be giving to the ink by myrtle. What really makes the ink more durable over the years, especially on paper, is honey. As a matter of fact, this is its main property. Camphor not only gives the ink a pleasant smell, but also it can be used instead of salt. Whether you like your ink to be glossy, you should dissolve a piece of candy in water and then add it to the ink. I suppose vinegar not only is a good activator, especially when it compounds with metal chemically, but also natural disinfectant. You can use lemon juice instead as well. The flies might sell on your ink stand while you're riding if you don't mix aloe with ink. In fact, it's a really perfect natural fly repellent. It is more enjoyable writing with the ink that has got enough amount of dodder because it's naturally a very nice lubricant. And finally, the role of carbon is to make the ink somehow embossed after it is dried on paper. Okay, for the next step, we must simmer some of these ingredients, including myrtle, mullein, daughter, and walnut shells, for 30 minutes up to an hour so as to get the extract. Then they must be strained out and kept aside at least for a week till they can be mixed with. <laughs> Thank you.
You can simply use a mortar like this in order to grind the saffron. Then it should be mixed with enough water and be put aside for some days. Afterwards, it's time to mix with ink. For aloe, you'd better dissolve it in hot water. Later, you can easily add it to the ink by a dropper. Since a pinch of cow bone should be blended with the ink, so just pick up a piece of cow bone, then grind it by the mortar and mix it with the ink. For henna and indigo, it's up to you. If you want, you can follow the same recipe which I already recommended for marrow, mullein, daughter and walnut shells. Or just mix them with enough water completely and uh, put them aside for a day. Again, you can simply use a dropper and add them to the ink. And ultimately, camphor, vinegar and honey should be directly mixed with the ink. Okay, here is a question. How come should some of these ingredients be put aside? for some hours or days and the answer is if you look at carefully one of these bottles which contains the extract let me show you then a thin layer of sediment is vividly obvious at the bottom of the bottle that's why they must be kept aside and be careful the quality of the ink depends on three important factors first is thickness of the ink so I highly recommend you make the ink thicker than thinner the second factor is time. On that account, you shouldn't use the ink at least for 6 months. And last but not least is shaking. In fact, the more you shake the ink, the better quality it'll have. Therefore, you can take the ink with yourself whenever you go walking or jogging or put it in your backpack if you go mountain climbing or even keep it in your car so it'll be shaked automatically while driving. Okay. To sum up, the issue which remains questionable for almost all my friends is how much of each ingredient should be added to the ink. And I always say, who knows? Generally, it depends on your experience. I mean, the more you try to prepare and make the ink, the more you will learn the ropes, so it would become your second nature. <laughs>
watching and stay tuned for more episodes.